Come here. Hello, President Shadwell, Provost Parole, Deans, Distinguished Guests, and the Class of 2019. What a time it has been. I want to first thank my family for being here, for my parents, my sisters, my friends. It is an honor to have you all here, so I thank you. I also want to thank my mentor, Bethany Pace, and uh, Ziad and Thaha for guiding me in my college career, presenting me with opportunities that I never thought I could obtain, and advising me to just live my best life. I also want to thank Hillary and Dominique for not letting me wear a cat since it wouldn't have been over at the apple. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around me, I see so many familiar faces from clubs, class, and on campus events. Uh, many of you I don't actually know. Some of you see me walking around very fast in the hallways, typically with earphones in my ears, because I'm always late for something. Um, some of you know me as that language girl for my strong passion for learning languages and their respective cultures. So to all of you, I say welcome. Class of 2019, I want to say that you have all done incredible work toward pursuing your academic careers at Towson. However, I know that this is not always the case. Some of you barely crawled your way across that finish line, and I know because I've been there. Do you all remember the all-nighters coming into class late with your head down, pretending the class can't see you? Yeah. Or only reading the, uh, the syllabi at the beginning of the semester to figure out your professor's attendance policy? Mm -hmm. As much as we want to forget, we cannot let go of those moments of struggle that got us here today. My first woman in gender studies professor, Dr. Jimmy Navarro, said, you cannot have testimonies without any tests. And who knows tests better than we do? I never thought I'd be speaking on this stage today. If you know me, you probably know that after high school I did pretty poorly in my classes, and my grades reflected this. Though I worked a bit harder in high school, I still did not read books. Um, I couldn't name five countries on the African continent. I can see a couple of you trying to name a couple now. Um, it wasn't until I came to college when I understood that education would be the most important thing in my entire life. When learning became my duty as well as my hobby, and obtaining good grades, obtaining good grades became less and less important. Since being here, I have found so many passive and drives. I changed my major and minor so many times that I'm quite familiar with the email which tells me that I cannot change my major within a span of two weeks. So, how many of you all are familiar with the question, what do you want to do in the future? My new response to this question is, do I even have the privilege to answer? Um, I do not know where I will be in 10 years, in five years, in one year, or in tomorrow. None of us do, and we cannot pretend that, that time is a given as we know it is not. What you want to be doing in 10 years is what you can be doing now. For example, service work is very important to me, as getting out into the community symbolizes breaking down the barriers which separate our institution from uh, Baltimore, the United States, and the world. If I want to serve in the future, what better way to guarantee that desire than starting now? I've worked with people experiencing homelessness, with the youth at Arita's Cross, and hurricane relief, and with creating food security with Tubman House. I wanted to work in prison reform and abolition, so I took a criminal justice service learning course at Baltimore County Detention Center. I wanted to be a foreign language professor as a freshman so I started three language clubs and I became a foreign language tutor for French, Arabic, Chinese, and German. I wanted to do all of these things while gaining international experience, so I had a choice to make. I had an interview with Duke University, and in the interview I was asked that very familiar question of what I want to do in the future. And I told them exactly what I told you. However, when they accepted me at their school, along with Howard University, I politely declined those opportunities and accepted a competitive position in the Peace Corps to serve in Morocco. Wow. I still plan on attending graduate school upon my return. However, my dreams are now in my past, my present, and inshallah, my future. It is important to have goals, but why wait if our liberal arts education has given us the tools to correct injustices happening right now against people of color, women, LGBTQ plus folk, differently abled people, immigrants, the incarcerated men and women who work $2 a day and making our school desks and chairs, and the people who do not have access to a college education as we all do. Woo!
privilege is not the time that may or may not exist far out in our future, but the opportunities that we have here at Towson. Opportunities such as walking 30 steps from the CLA building to the health center, a health and counseling center to seek help when we felt overwhelmed, or having access to an endless amount of books to read at Cook Library. I did not seize these opportunities in college because I am exceptional, but because I understood that being in college was an exceptional opportunity, and I did not have time to waste, and neither do you. I am very proud, well, sad. <laughs> I am very proud to be with you today because I know that in the future, my Facebook and Instagram feeds will be filled with the great work that you are all doing wherever you find yourself. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. I truly honor you.